Hey guys, it's Spud Rifle here and we are talking today about a true beginner's guide to cross out. And it's a true beginner's guide because I myself am still very much an amateur, a beginner in this game. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about how I've got started, um, how I'm enjoying the game so far, and just the real basics. So none of the stuff that you don't need to know if, you, uh, if you're brand new to this game. So this is the main menu you're going to be shown when you start the game for the first time. It can be a bit overwhelming, as I've mentioned in another video. Um, it's a little bit hectic. There are plenty of uh, tabs and side menus and notifications and scrolling rewards bars and blueprint buttons and uh, there seems to be a, a constant chat with people playing this game. I don't exactly know what that's all about. Um, there's a clan, there's friends, there's uh, something with shiny uh, flashing bits on there. Look, you don't need to know 90% of this crap when you start the game. Uh, it'll all come with time and it'll become uh, just another one of those kind of PUBG style games where you ignore most of the notifications that are flashing up at you whilst you just get into the core of the game. So first things first, uh, you're going to see a different car when you start things up. It's going to look like a Jeep with a gun on the, on the hood um, or a, um, a Toyota Cruiser kind of car. What you're going to want to do straight away is going to battle. Um, so you need to play more matches to unlock new things to put onto your car. It's pretty straightforward that way. It's a bit of a grind, um, but actually I've probably played maybe three hours of this and I'm level nine now. Um, and I can I can customize my car with all types of shiny, shiny new items. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the car on screen later. Um, Thomas the Flank Engine, we're going to be calling him <laughs> because of this blue reminding me of Thomas the Tank. But uh, also because he's just an excellent flanking all-rounder. So you can actually get this car and all of the components on it um, probably by level 4 or 5. Um, and I'll talk about its composition later on. So hitting this battle button will throw you into the default, which I think is either what you last played or what you... Um, I think the, the default is actually a brawl, which is a PvP, so you'll be in a multiplayer team versus team um, in kind of a deathmatch or capture the zone style um, match. Um, and what you'll see on this uh, select mode is a number of other things, but I don't think you need to trouble yourself with these yet. I certainly haven't. Raids uh, look like you can get different types of rewards as you go up through the um, through the different difficulty level if you want. Uh, missions is a PvP or PvE, um, so you can actually play AI if you want to. Um, Spoiler alert, there may be bots in your PvP matches as well, um, but they do fill the numbers out quite nicely and they're not too noticeable. You'll see that there are different rewards for different um, styles of play. Um, now, this will become more uh, impactful and more meaningful as you progress through the ranks and as you want to change your car up. Um, you do not need to worry about that for your first 20 or so matches. I would just keep on plodding through, playing PvP and having some fun with uh, with some other lower ranked cars. Uh, the next thing to really uh, um, pay attention to, it's going to be the build menu. So if uh, once you're back after a few battles, um, then I recommend going into uh, pressing G or, or selecting build here. And what you'll be greeted with is this mode where you can kind of pan around your car using WASD and the mouse. Um, and you can see all the different component pieces of the car in front of you um, and you can right click to remove them um, or press tab to bring up a list of new items you can add on to your car. Now, uh, the biggest thing to pay attention to is when you haven't got your cursor on the car at all, this little um, menu here at the top right of my screen um, has at the very head of the menu the power score. This power score defines exactly how strong your car is. It can be based on the power of the guns. It can be based on the uh, the overall weight of the car, which uh, which brings up its uh, its durability as well. And the total parts is there. So you can see at the moment, I've got 35 out of 50 pieces. Um, I can't remember what the starting limit is for total parts, but that's another number that grows with levels. Um, Energy I'll talk about in more depth in a, in a second, but this power score will essentially be used to match make. So when they're balancing teams, um, they'll try and find uh, lobbies, so to speak, with um, similar 
similarly ranked power scores and 2,595 is middle of the road um, at the moment, although <laughs> I'm saying that at level 8 or 9, <laughs> so it probably isn't. There's probably like a 25,000, but um, <laughs> at the start, I think your first car is probably worth about 1,200 um, and mine's slightly more than double that. And Thomas the flank engine, by the way, has done me no wrong. He's, uh, he's a versatile attacker, he's speedy. The two medium wheels here that I've got on give him a lot of pace um, and the proximity to each other mean that I can turn on a sixpence which is really useful um, in close close quarters and the uh, speaking of close quarters this buzzsaw doesn't do um, do me badly either uh, with the hatchet which is basically a long shank meaning that I can ram people if, um, if I'm coming in at speed. Um, but I've got two guns on there, I've got the M37 Piercer and a Vector both guns that I think again I've unlocked at levels 4, 5 or 6 um, but you'll have two other machine guns on your starting vehicle um, which aren't bad at all and machine gun fire um, is my favourite on this game because you can just do constant battery um, with that uh, whereas a cannon or a shotgun has a much slower firing rate and you'll find yourself um, a little bit pants down when it comes to the gap in between shots if you're surrounded now everything um, every kind of component part has got its own kind of durability score its own weight uh, its own power score so you can see that um, by adding a new piece like the whale back here i've added 38 to my power score keeping your power score low at the start is probably recommended um, because uh, the the higher the power score if you're adding just um, bits like this strut here worth three um, the, yeah, by the time you've added up plenty of those if they're not weapons <laughs> you're just dragging your power score up for the sake of it um, and you're going to be matched with people with bigger guns um, and they're going to blow you to pieces so Yes, uh, I'll get into this build shortly. The other big thing to talk about is energy. Now, energy all stems from one component part of your vehicle, and it is the cabin. So the cabin is essentially where the driver would sit. Now, there are different types of cabin. So um, you can see that I've unlocked three. I think you'll start with the Gorilla, which is a medium cabin, which adds nine points. And um, there's also the Docker, which is kind of more of a van, uh, van front, which I unlocked quite early on. And that one's nine points as well. So the one that I've actually equipped, which is the only one that I have, the Sprinter Cabin, that gives me 10. And therefore, that's uh, that's the best that I've got it's at the used. moment. I'm um, sure and at the would... very, very center top of my screen, you can see a plus 10 um, with a lightning bolt in green and then a minus two in red and a minus eight in red under what looks like um, some kind of machinery and a gun. So essentially what that's saying is that this cabin um, in the middle of my car is giving me 10 energy points and I'm spending them on two radiators which are hidden down here um, which are breeze um, breeze blocks um, which have um, an energy drain of one each so that's why there's two of them um, different mass and power score but they increase my time um, that my weapons can shoot for um, until they overheat two energy on the breeze blocks and then the other eight is split between my two guns so you can see an energy drain of three for the piercer and an energy drain of three for the vector and then there's an energy drain of two for this buzzsaw on the front. So um, so that's, yeah, three plus three plus two. That's the rest of the eight that my 10 power is being spent on. Now then, uh, what I'll do next is by, bit by bit, I'm going to remove parts of this car so you can see what it does, uh, what it's composed of, and, and then I'll show you some gameplay as to why I think it's so bloody good. Um, so uh, at the front, we've got a bumper catch, um, at the buzzsaw and the hatchet. But beyond that, we've got uh, some frame blocks. So these are the very, very basics um, which come in the uh, in this structure area, I think. No, they don't. They're part of the they're part of the base as well. Sorry. So the base of your car all has to touch each other. That's one of the one of the building rules. I will build something um, beyond Thomas the Flank Engine, but I'm just going to talk through the rest of his um, composition. Um, I've got some hell pipes at the front, which act as kind of just covers for my wheels from these angles. So um, they will get destroyed. Um, but there's a lot of kind of bumper to bumper um, gameplay in this. So I wanted something that kind of just protected those wheels from from that angle. So let's get rid of those two. 
I've got something called a whale back, which I think comes at the same time as the sprinter cabin. I think it's supposed to go behind it, but I um, I like it as a kind of a nose of the car over what would be kind of the motor and bonnet area, but obviously not in this case. So let's get rid of that so we can expose a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to get rid of my cabin just yet, but I'll get rid of the guns, the vector and the uh, piercer. Um, let's have a look where we are with that. Behind the um, behind the cabin, I have a um, a gun mount, and that sat upon my breeze blocks, which were my radiators. And then the back is really uh, has really been effective. So, but from a strength point of view, this has made my car very very hard to penetrate from behind. Oh, I shouldn't say that sentence. Anyway. Um, <laughs> We got some uh, medium struts, uh, which were symmetrical um, and supporting a bumper catch, a rear van door, which is a very uh, commonly used element because of the coverage that that brings, albeit it's also effing heavy and um, will slow you down slightly. And then uh, then we're on to the real core of this uh, this vehicle, the square um, that is Thomas the Flank Engine's uh, nimble um, nimble power. So essentially bringing your wheels closer together in this game seems to let you uh, turn much more uh, with much more dexterity. Um, I've got medium wheels, but you'll start with light wheels, I think. Um, and then if I take those away, you can see I've got an outer fender with some spikes on it. I think that's mainly decoration, if I'm honest. It never really protects me, um, but I've put it on there for uh, to look really cool. And then we're down to um, just the struts on the corner. So just these light struts, um, which uh, helped kind of add a bit more to the uh, to the wheel protection again. And the most basic bits then of uh, the the frame, uh, the six by four frame blocks, some two by six uh, towards the back to give me a little bit more length, um, and then some one by fours in uh, in that shape. So I'll give you one look from the top, uh, so you can see. Uh, if you did want to replicate this uh, this vehicle, which I do recommend um, doing so when you get to kind of level four or five, um, then that's what it looks like, and that's the that's the base of your frame right there. So. What I'm hoping now is if I zoom out here and I control Z, I don't know how many it banks, but should be able to just add things together and you should be able to see this all coming together in a lovely, lovely fashion. Um, it's working. That's beautiful. And this is Thomas the Flank Engine. And I'll go into a battle to show you just what Thomas can do. And, and yeah, that was as quick as it comes. The reason we gave this game a 5 out of 5 on the pickup and play, uh, the matchmaking is just insanely quick. There are a lot of people playing this game, quite obviously, um, and with good reason. I mean, it's free and it's fun, so we do give this um, quite a high merit in our ranking video. Um, you can see on either team here, we've got two um, two sets of eight real players, and then Frank on the reds and Sandra on the blues. Those will be the bots. So they're not uh, they're not worth prioritising really. They tend to be less aggressive, less clever in the uh, in the actual gameplay, and it's just worth. Um, kind of leaving leaving them to it maybe disarm take their guns off um but don't spend too long uh, hunting down the bots oh my god that guy's in trouble oh he's got three right where's your guns mate oh they're on the sides oh he's got cannons oh my god we're in trouble okay we're a bit more nimble oh we're getting ganged up on oh we're in trouble thomas thomas don't need this but you can see I'm more uh, nimble and able to get away from players like that. Oh, not without wheels, I'm not. Right. Get away! <laughs> well, I can just find my friends. Oh! <laughs> so, <laughs> please don't take that as how uh, how Thomas usually performs. We uh, we ran into some serious, uh, seriously coordinated bastards there. And it is fun. Uh, it is better fun playing with friends. I'm obviously going solo for the purpose of the video. Um, but yeah, when you can gang up on people like that, it really is powerful in this game. Look, we are getting toasted. There is uh, only one red has died and the whole blue team has gone. And if we look at the power scores as well, um, we were middle of the road really on our team. That is one of the worst battles I've done. Um, but I'll, I'm going to give it one more go uh, so that all of this uh, talking about how good that build is doesn't go <laughs> doesn't go straight down the toilet. Um, OK, so oh, this is going to be a test. So solo queuing in a lobby uh, that's this much stronger. So the top of their team is about 400 points stronger than me. Um, this might be tricky. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to follow Lisa. Who we got? 
Let's follow Grace. Right, that's a very clever name, Grace. Let, no, that can't be. We've got so our bot is our best player. That's absolutely awful. Right, if I um if I follow my blues in, make sure they don't get flanked. Spread out the uh, spread out the fire. Try and take out some guns. on him, is he? My gun not working. Right. Take out the person, not the not the bot. Take out the human. So I think we ganged up better on them than uh, than they did on us this time. Last one's up here, lads. Oh, he's taking our base. So that's the other way to win, of course. You can bypass the uh, the actual battle and go for a capture of the base, which is uh, very good again if you've got numbers. This guy doesn't have a thing on his car. Right, buzzsaw to the rescue. This is going to hit me. Okay, we have a victory. Thomas, the flank engine, did all right there, and I'm glad because I needed some redemption after that last one. Um, but yeah, two kills, four assists, third in the in on the winning team, third best score on the uh, on the pitch. I'll take that. Um, and again, uh, that was going into a match with uh, some some seriously higher uh, numbers than us. So I think we do usually um, do as well as that, and that is why I'm selling this build um, rather than uh, rather than yeah that first match where it all went to to shit if there's ever a crate here you can open that and put that as something that goes into your um into your storage but i didn't go up a, a level otherwise when you go up the normal levels which are kind of these things up here um then you'll unlock components for your car yeah so overall um i'm hoping this has been a useful um useful little foray into how to get started in crossout um i won't go through all of these tabs because again it's just not something that i think you need to pay attention to um drop us a like guys if you um if you have liked this video if you've got tips as well for getting started in crossout then pop them down in the comments um and i hope you have a good day catch you next time